Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSC call. As I'm sure you're all familiar with, this is a public call. Anybody is welcome to join, contribute. There's two requirements to doing so. The first one is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed. And the other part is the code of conduct, which is linked from the agenda. So with that done, let's get going. Announcements, right? Sure, every week uh, we send out the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter. Um, everyone is welcome to add a comment and, uh, and get their content in there. I did have a question uh, this week. Uh, if, that is, if labs are allowed to submit items and the answer is yes, absolutely, please submit technical items. Um, you know, this is uh, a develop a, a newsletter uh, by developers for developers. So uh, please help us make it more relevant. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. That's, I mean, we should be inclusive when it comes to this kind of stuff. Thank you, Ray. Any other announcements anyone wants to make? I guess I will insert that we probably won't have a call next week, given that Tracy's off. I'm going to be on the road. Not sure I can make it. So sounds like there are other people will be missing. So I'll make it official, but uh, I don't expect we'll have a call next week. Just beware. All right. So we have three quarterly reports in the mix. So Avalon was the last one that actually came in. Um, I didn't see any issues being raised, although not everybody has read it either from what I could see uh, by the number of unchecked marked or unchecked marks. Is there any questions, anyone, or any comments anybody wants to make about Avalon? The Avalon report. If not, what about Ursa? I mean, uh, here now, yep. Grace. Yes, please, Grace. I uh, yeah. just wanted to call out that I, I did have a comment in the doc, I yeah. believe, um, that, you know, just looking at kind of their analytics numbers, it seems that they've had just kind of a um, pretty significant decline in kind of the contributors and committers over the last uh, few quarters. Um, so not, I don't know, it sounds like they have been, and Eugene uh, responded to my note around, you know, some of their plans to kind of uh, get more engagement, which is great, but just wanted to like call that out to the group and um, just cause that has kind of been, that was one observation I had. Yeah, no, uh, thank you for commenting. I saw you did that and Eugene answered. And uh, I mean, I don't know what the TSC can do, but I'm glad you spotted that and brought it up. So thank you for doing that. All right, uh, back to Ursa. It's the same kind of situation in terms of review. I noticed there were quite a few boxes not checked yet even though this one was already submitted uh, over a year ago. So oh, sorry, um, a week ago. <laughs> so I know, yes. I think I, I made an edit and I think I like this week and I think I unchecked a lot of people's boxes. Oh shoot. Yeah, mine is unchecked now. Uh, for whatever reason, if I like, I, I changed like one line and it unchecked a bunch of people's boxes. So I think of, considerably more people have read it than have checked it. All right, that's good to know. Oh, yeah, I see your comment. Maybe that I raised the review marks. Uh, yep, okay. But um, so otherwise I didn't see anything new other than the usual. I, I have a, a question that comes to mind only because I'm looking at this right now. Uh, do you want me to remove the required information to from the thingamabob? The 
Have you implemented the repo learner.json in all your repos since last week the vote was to remove that requirement? No, that's not what we said. I actually updated the template because it used to say, have you um, copied the repo linter JSON in all your repos? Oh, oh the, well, no, sorry. Actually, yes, that's the formal wording. If you use the new template, I updated the template to say, have you implemented repo? Uh, no, the common repository structure. In fact, if you look at the Avalon report, yes. If you look at the Avalon report, it has the new wording, the question that's actually from the template after I did it. it okay, all right, have thank you. you. Implemented the common repository structure in all your repos. Okay. So uh, we need people to update their. Of course, you know, I cut the uh, hot and we all do it. I'm not blaming it. We all copy, you know, the pre previous report, which means that if there's a change to the template, you don't get it. But um, so beware for everybody, you know, um, beware everybody. Once you, I mean, next time you submit a report, make sure you update that section. Um, and then we have the Bezu report, which I, you know, I have to say it's a bit the same in terms of review. Quite a few people have not reviewed those reports, even though they have been submitted quite a while ago. So I don't know what's going on there. Maybe people have already started going on vacation, but uh, I didn't see any reasons to be concerned, but I will carry those over to the next call so that more people have a chance to uh, have seen them and raise any questions if there are any. Okay. Yeah. One thing worth pointing out, I did a separate page on the badging, um, which is something that was part of the pending badging thing is to have a project uh, prototype it. Um, it took only about an hour, actually an hour and a half, because I spent 30 minutes messing around with LFX to try and find a report that didn't exist. So if you scroll down, there's another section, keep going, keep going, keep going, badging. So there's the page of what it would look like if you did the badging. The only thing that really could get a report for it um, is the decentralized. Everything else is just basically reviewing the standards and making your claim as to why you meet the standard. <clears throat> Thank you for highlighting this, uh, Dano. I think it's great that you took a stab at uh, implementing it and reporting on your experience. Hopefully we can have a few more people do the same and uh, get a bit more you know, comfortable with the proposal of having this badge system in place. As a reminder, everyone, in case anybody forgot, we have a pretty solid proposal and the, uh, we just haven't decided to implement it uh, yet. And uh, we are looking for, I mean, the decision was to postpone the final decision to enforce this based on some experimentation that would inform us as to, you know, how much burden we are adding to the projects by imposing them, uh, imposing on them to, to, you know, set up this badge system. Dano, are you still on the queue or do you forget to lower your hand? I forgot to lower my hand. <laughs> no problem. All right, let's move on then. So is David here? Yes, David, you asked if you would have time. Absolutely, so go ahead. Tell us about the trending community activity section. Thanks. Well, really, I wanted to have Arun share the, the work that he's done because his start here uh, site is really powering all this. But, you know, Ryan, I did make some space on the main wiki page with the redesign to have a new dynamic section where we could show, you know, people what's happening right now in the community instead of just having a static page. So I think this is going to be really helpful to let people, you know, find out where interesting things are happening, what's going on at any given moment. So I'm really excited that this is here, but 
mainly I just wanted to, you know, have a rune share and then we could talk about if other sorts of dynamic content would be useful to include. All right, thank you, David. Arun, do you want to add anything? Tell us a bit more. Sure, I think it all originated when we wanted to in, in, include or help new developers join in and, and um, make make it easy for them to join Hyperledger and start contributing. And that's where it, I believe in the initial discussions, it was all about, hey, can we tag issues with good first issues or start using those tags which are available on, on both GitHub issues and uh, the Jira. But um, then we started thinking, how can we aggregate all that information under one space so that somebody who is new, they can find all that they want by searching over there. And that idea evolved. And meanwhile, um, I guess Rai and, and David, they were trying to revamp the Hyperledger's wiki main page. That's the one which we see over here. And it has these trending topics on, on top, right? So this is what is happening within Hyperledger space. And, and um, the current refresh rate is six hours, but it can be modified to much more frequent updates. And all of this is dynamically pulled in from GitHub sources across repositories. Um, so there is more to do. And if there are any ideas which is different from this or additional information which might help, that will also be introduced. And, and the other update on the same front and in order to increase contributions to Hyperledger is, I believe it was Cactus project that has a getting started kind of video, if I'm not wrong. So Cactus has come up with a concept where, where they just created a video. Hey, this is how I set up my development environment. And this is how I compile my source code. And this is what verification I do after my contribution. And each of them is a small bit like three to five minute video and they are all uploaded on YouTube. And anybody who is interested in contributing to that project, they just go there, search, and they can replicate what is seen in the video. So that could be another idea that we can propose to different projects. And in fact, from um, I mean, there are community members in India who are willing to join or make such videos for one of the projects this weekend. And what else? I, I think this, this is the kind of work that is going on in terms of helping new contributors. Is David, is there anything that you wanted me to cover? I think it's great. Thank you. I also uh, wanted to point out that these macros these plugins that generate that pull this in are available broadly. Um, so the start here project generates some markdown. And uh, if you if your project wants to have more uh, dynamic content in the wiki, you can just look at the main page, see how we did it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, or feel free to ask. Uh, I think it's pretty great. It's not uh, refreshed on load. I don't know exactly what the refresh uh, time window is for that. It's hours, not seconds, but it's you know better than a static page that you have to caretake. Anyway. Any, anybody, any comments or questions? No, that's all right. But thank you, Aaron and team for doing this. I think it is cool. It's kind of interesting to have a global view that actually mixes things, you know, and I'll sh I mean, I'm sure most of us have that experience where, you know, where we're focusing on specific projects and that kind of gives you a view of what's going on elsewhere, which I kind of like. The fact that it mixes all of them into a single bucket, I, I think it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I guess I missed oh, talk about one more point. So we we are trying to bring structure around this and get this work done under a framework, and that's where contributors experience working group 
or whatever the name is not yet finalized, right? So the new working group that we were thinking about, that could be a structure where all this kind of work could continue to happen. And um, yeah, that might excite as well. Unfortunately, there are no much updates because the meeting is scheduled for next week where we'll go through some of the ideas and come up with a proposal soon. All right, thank you. So if there's nothing else on this, I guess we can move forward with the agenda. So the main other item is the criteria for entering incubation. So I assume everybody knows what we're, uh, this refers to. So, you know, it came up as part of the uh, Firefly, Firefly uh, proposal evaluation. You know, it became pretty clear that uh, we were lacking some solid documentation that we could uh, rely on and that the, uh, the, the proposers could go to to figure out on what basis we would evaluate the proposal. So um, there is some general like shared knowledge by at least some of us based on historic, you know, the, the, the history of Hyperledger, but um, we ought to actually do a better job and uh, define what the, what, what the criteria are in a way which I would expect to be similar to the incubation exit criteria. So I asked, I, I was kind of hoping somebody would step up and, and volunteer to take a crack at it. That's what I did for the incubation exit criteria. I took a first draft and then, you know, we kept ashing at it, but nobody has. And since we have time, I think, you know, uh, Dano kind of suggested we can start collectively, collect some criteria, discuss what, how we go at it and what might be relevant. And maybe that can be enough to get us going hot. Yeah, so before we get started, I think I said this in the document, but the criteria for incubation is essentially, a, or I'm sorry, the criteria for say active status or the things that you've written are hard and fast, right? It's you either have it or you don't. And if you have it, you're good. And if you don't, you don't. And then we spend all the time arguing over interpretation of what we meant by the criteria. Um, so what I suggested here is you know, it's going to be hard for us to agree. We might not agree on all the project, on all the criteria for all the projects, but if we just list a bunch of criteria that at least some TSC members think are important, right? Even just the form of sort of like pluses and minuses. And we say that, you know, if your project has sort of like lots more pluses than minuses, it's probably going to get approved. If it has more minuses than pluses, it's probably not, right? Um, and I think this is a good way of letting community members gauge whether their project is ready for incubation and, you know, sort of, um, you know, maybe the pluses and minuses are equal and they can say that, well, you know, this is going to be a contentious process. Maybe I'll wait until it's less contentious um, and just this kind of thing. And I just think it would be good to sort of make information about this public and what people are deciding on and get, you know, empower the community with information. No, oh, absolutely. I agree with that. And that's the, clearly the intent, you know, is to document it so that people know what to expect, at least, you know, to a certain level. I agree with you that there may always be some objectivity involved. Uh, but, you know, subjectivity involved, I should rather, but uh, at least, you know, uh, I think having some documentation would address this feeling that people, you know, uh, get of having a moving uh, goalpost, which clearly is, you know, to nobody's be uh, benefit. Um, I think we all lose when people go through this and then get frustrated, not necessarily by the answer, but by the fact that the answer seems to be changing <laughs> as they address, you know, points that are being raised. So I think that's the, you know, to me, the biggest um, 
flaw in the current situation is this idea that well you know people are being told one thing they go ahead and address that point and then they say oh but there is also this <laughs> oh but we still can't tell you yes because of that and it just keeps going at least if we have a list that kind of gives a you know a, a more framed discussion um that would scope a little bit things and and it, i think it would help us too because i honestly think there was quite a bit of confusion in when we're talking about firefly especially uh, you know there were things that sometimes people brought up that i thought well wait this is an exit criteria not an entering criteria and and you know i don't think that's fair to say well you should really already have that, although in some cases, maybe there is reason to say no, even to enter uh, incubation, you need to have that. And, yeah. you know, the, the the fact that it's part of the exit criteria would only be um, um, confirmation that this is still true. So, Dano. So, my experience uh, when we were bringing in bases, there was a lot of goalposts moving. Um, the week that we were going up, you know, there's like double attempts, the TSC call. Um, we didn't get through it the first meeting. Uh, there are questions questioning our choice of language, questioning all sorts of other things that really were never questioned for other projects. And then the next meeting, before picking up the basic consideration, um, you approved a different project and they brought up a different subject about convergence versus, um, versus uh, separation or whatever the exact word was. So, you know, it seems like the standard we have is to move goalposts during the, the uh, evaluation. And that's not a good feel for projects coming in. I mean, when you look at it, we've only had, what, one, maybe two projects come in in the last year. So some sort of a list of these are the questions we're going to ask, even if they're not, you have to pass it at this level. But if we set the bounds of what is valid for not accepting the project, you know, there's probably going to be a force majeure clause because it's things you can't predict. Like if someone comes in some strange patent situation that you've never had before. But I think, you know, there should be some list that gives us a, gives new projects coming in a clue of how they're going to be interrogated. Because if it's even the slightest bit contentious, or there's the slightest bit of, you know, reason why people might, you know, fear this can take away from their project, they're going to come in with teeth bared. That's the experience that I've seen over the past two years in the TSC. Yep. Fully agree. Arun. I, I completely agree to what Dano is saying. So the kind of, in, I mean, the whatever we are trying to list over here, having multiple um, organizations contributions. So these kind of criteria could be kept for e exiting the incubation. So, I mean, for incubation itself, for somebody who has a project in their own enterprise, uh, it, it could be enterprise or, or their own repository, right? When they bring up that proposal to hyperledgers, we should be more welcoming to them. But um, and we can, of course, TSC will make a decision whether that's a mature enough project or should it go through a lapse process if some of the claims that have been made in the project are not true. And we should actually define that process rather than defining um, the, the numbers kind of thing. The other reason for that is also because if, um, they could be coming to Hyperledger because they want an open collaboration environment and they see this as a space to get that. All right, thanks. Nathan? Um, we spend a lot of time uh, talking about, or at least thinking about how to help our maintainers be more friendly and more welcoming. And the idea of the TSC is that we come from that maintainer community. And the hope is that we represent the best and the most welcoming of the folks who are participating as maintainers in the projects. So. One thing I really like about Hart's suggestion is that we, we, we it lets us be upfront about how that there are some, some factors in improving a project that are subjective. And my hope is that it lets us be really honest about what conversation to expect and also help set the expectation amongst TSC members that we really are looking for ways to help people participate at Hyperledger. And if there's a project that isn't harmful, we're trying to figure out how to help include and help contributors who have that valuable things to add to the mission to add those things to our mission. And um, I think sometimes when we get caught up in the details of, you know, writing down the specifics of the rules, 
um, that we sometimes lose sight of that, that we really are trying to help people contribute and help people add more value to what's going on at Hyperledger. All right, thank you. Good point. Anyone else? Okay, if there's no, I mean, does anybody oppose the idea of working, I mean, going through this exercise and developing this? Anybody thinks it's a waste of time? Just checking. I, I would not expect that, but uh, so I suggest we start going down the list. I mean, there were some criteria that were already, you know, put in comments, like the one that's on the screen uh, from, uh, Part. He had a couple, and there's some. Even it's interesting because as soon as you start writing them down, there are questions you know that get raised as to what the interpretation is. Because you know, when you talk about contributor and maintainer and whatnot, it's like, well, how do you define this exactly, and so on. So, and by the way, so we have one thing to start from. We're not starting from scratch completely because. There is the hip template, right? There is a form that people fill out. And I think it's useful to have a look at what the form asked. And in particular, you know, it was clear during the, the discussion on the Firefly proposal that, for instance, the role of sponsor was very unclear. It's not defined anywhere. And, you know, they clearly went out of their way to find more sponsors. And I'm not sure it made any difference because you know um, it was unclear what you know whether it how much it mattered. Hot, go back. Hot. So yeah, to follow up on your point, um, maybe a good way to do this is I think you wanted to create a do a new document, and I think if we create a new document and we just have all of the TSC members uh, give everybody some some summer homework. Um, and really, well, anyone who wants to contribute, it doesn't just have to be TSC members, obviously. Um, but we just all fill out sort of like literally pros and cons in a table. Uh, and then we can consolidate uh, and clarify uh, and figure out something we can, you know, a format we can put this in where it's accessible to everyone. Yes. So. I mean, there, maybe we should agree on what process we want to use. At the end of the day, we will have to have a pull request against the TSC repo, adding a page that defines the entering incubation, entering uh, criteria. Um, that's my expectation. I think that's, you know, kind of what we have to do to to get consistent with the documentation which has been moved to the TSC repo. Now, I don't know if it's the most effective to have somebody starts pulling a, ma making a pull request and then people comment on it, or do we go first through a, some kind of gathering phase where maybe a Google doc document could be used more effectively to kind of like a free for all where people can add what executor they would they think would make sense. And we can maybe have this kind of like, you know, first pass where people enter whatever they think makes sense. And then we can start going through the list that we gather in such a way and figure out, you know, maybe of course people can use the comment uh, feature of Google Doc to question, ask uh, clarifications, I, would I that really, make sense? I, I beg you not to use Google Docs. Please, okay. please use the wiki. Uh, Google Docs excludes uh, our members in China. And at, I, 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 we lost the founding documents for the Sawtooth progress, project because they're in a Google Doc that no one has a copy of anymore. Yep, I saw that. So I, I just, please don't make Google Docs the first place you go or the second or the third. Um, I, would, I, I would ask you to use the wiki. I have probably against my, oh, that wasn't where I wanted to go. Um, 
the only problem with the wiki is that it's not uh interactive like you know you have to go in edit mode if somebody does the same at the same time then you're in trouble that's uh, why it's not it's not great from a collaborative editing point of view i'm i'm open to other solutions was that a github wiki would that allow us to comment and add reply over there so i did enable this um so we could see if this is is different um in terms of editing experience i don't think it will be though so arno you and i were talking about lf edge how does lf edge handle this they use google docs as far as i know well no no, no. i mean like uh having a new project come in to LF Edge. Ah, a new project come in. Yeah, so well, Firefly was trying point. to come into LF Edge, for instance. Yeah, they, they have their own process, and I don't know that they have a very clearly defined process either, to be honest. So someone has pointed out if two people are in edit mode in the wiki, it's just like live editing. You can see I was typing just like Google Docs. That's true. Um, I'm not sure who Hyperledger Project is. I assume that's Karen. Um, but uh, that's correct. I'm sorry, what? Karen? If two people are editing the same document, you, you, you have a conflict, don't you? No. No. I Hyperledger Project's me, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is Karen. So if two people are in um, the edit mode in, in the wiki, uh, it is just like Google Docs. You can see them editing. It'll show you who's in the doc. Seriously? Yeah. Well, that's news to me. Yep. But that sounds, that's good news. Thank you, Karen, for letting us know. I mean, I- If you, if you, thought... if, if you click update and someone is still editing, you won't see those edits until that person clicks update. But if you if two people are in edit mode, um, you will see it live. Because there was, okay, that's great news. I, I, I went through something the other day where it said, oh, that page has changed. You have to copy your changes elsewhere before or you're going to lose them. And I was like, well, that's not so great, but you know, so maybe it was a different type of situation. Uh, so with that being, uh, then I am happy to use the wiki to do what I was talking about. Bobby? So we start with the developing a list of criteria. Everybody can have a go at it, adding criteria that they think are relevant. And then, uh, we can start hashing through those and, and have a discussion as to what makes sense. Bobby. We took a whack at this a while ago, um, and there is some information on the learning materials working group page. I put a link in the chat. Um, and if you want to use that um, location to start an edit page, that's fine. I can curate it a little bit, um, but it's in the chat. So wait, you took a walk at what? A while, ago, a while ago with Salona, we tried to get best practice badges for um, a way to report projects are ready to be exited out of incubation and into active status. And we didn't get very far, but I gathered the information and I put it on that page. Oh, okay. You said you put that in the chat. Which chat is that? I'm still using Rocket Chat. Yeah, oh, it's up there. Channel. Sorry, there was <laughs> somehow I expected it to be the last message. My bad. <laughs> Thank you. I see it. And the example used was for Explorer. So that's all the information was when we were trying to document how they got um, through the process. Uh, 
All right, interesting. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other ideas, anybody? Any opinions as to how we should go at this? I, I like this GitHub wiki. It's actually creating an history, just like how we have history on, on code commits. Well, I, I, I like it too, but I, I would prefer, it doesn't appear to support the collaborative editing thing. So I would really, I would yeah, really prefer no. to keep it here. I agree. I mean, given what uh, has been said about the, the collaborative uh, aspects of a wiki, I don't see the point of moving to GitHub wiki. Let's stick with the wiki we have. So I think, you know, we should, we should probably have a different page. I don't know if we want to edit that one or if, um, and I think, Rather than uh, using Bobby's page as is, I think we should, you know, people should look into this and see if there are things they are get inspired, you know, with and, and bring those in. But um, I don't, I just don't know whether we create a new page or if we use that same page. I think we ought to use a different page. So maybe we carry a page that says uh, incubation exit criteria. Can you create that, uh, Rai? And then we can link that from the, uh, and people can have a go at entering their criteria. It's entry for incubation, not exit, right? You said exit. Yes. Did I say exit? I'm sorry. So if the goal is to not have a specific standardized objective list, should we use a word like considerations instead of criteria? Something, you know, since we're going to be soft about these rules to begin with. Okay, that's fine with me. I mean, we can start with this. I agree that some may not be, I mean, I, you know, Suppose you could say some criteria are softer than can be softer than others, but I'm fine with considerations. I think it's definitely a step in the right direction anyway. How many people can uh, edit this collaboratively? Karen, do you know there is limit? We can all stop editing like right now. Go for it. There's, there are practical limits, but it's not, you know, terrible. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see that I'm the only person editing this right now. Uh, as more people click the edit button up here, I see Arun is editing, right? So I see where people are doing their thing. So just be excellent to one another and go for it. So, I mean, I, w one thing I, I actually was interested in discussing is uh, that I expect Dana will add is, you know, um, whether a project should already be open sourced somehow. I thought this was, you know, something that definitely, you know, turned some people off in the Firefly case. Gary? And I was wondering if, if the, you know, p some people felt differently about this. Gary? The, uh, well, it's funny because it's funny you uh, brought up that point. Um, I, I guess you, to me, I, I think that the code base sh should exist. <laughs> um, and, you know, maybe, maybe it does make, I, I, I guess I, I would say in general, right? The project should have probably been, I, I was just trying to think about like Apache projects, right? Just looking, because again, I think we were becoming more like Apache than what we started out to be. I don't know of a case in general, right, of anything that's 
that hasn't already been like open source, you know, in open source, right? Um, established, you know, a few of the kind of, you know, whatever ground rules, right? A few of the main ones for entry criteria. So yeah, I do think, you know, an open source code base, the code base should probably have already been open sourced um, in, in the open, right? You know, should be, you know, obviously in the open, uh, probably all the licensing stuff should have probably been taken care of, right? If they want to make agreement on that stuff. So yeah, I think it does actually make, make sense. Yeah, but so it raises the question about stuff, right? If people, I guess I'll put it this way. If, if people are committed to doing this, it shouldn't, committed to following the intent of why the stuff was here, then it shouldn't really matter if their project makes it to Hyperledger or is open source, you know, as open source, right? Uh, so, so I, I mean, Dano just read my mind. I, I was going to say maybe it should be available with an Apache license. You know, there are certain things like this we can set as a minimum. But, you know, there is ambiguity as to what it means to have already been open source, because to me, what was unfortunate in Firefly, I think the timing was wrong in, the, in that they, they first submitted their proposal even before the code was made available at all which I think was unfortunate. I mean, they quickly catch up and, and, and open their code anyway, but it seemed like, you know, Dano, maybe you can speak to this. You expected more than just the code being available um, and more like, you know, they have been open source for a while. And I think so, that's the difference. Yeah, the difference there for me was, you know, they wanted to bring the code in and said, you know, I want to look at the code before we prove this is what we're getting into, um, because it turned out there was stuff like GPL issues. Um, but their, their response was, well, we'll share it with you privately. And for an open source project, it shouldn't matter if it's being private or not. And I, every other project that came in with, I think with the exception of, of Hyperledger and um, Sawtooth in like the first six months, had some sort of an open source port base that had been out for a while, whether it was in labs whether it came in from some external source that had an open source, um, an open and visible. Because, um, you know, I guess one of the concerns is, is, you know, I don't, I'm not sure, I don't think it was happening in this project, but I think there's other projects where companies might have a project that's dying and decide, you know what, let's just throw it over the wall. That's been an issue with Apache projects, and I don't want it to become an issue with Hyperledger projects. To where companies like, you know, we're going to cancel this project. Yeah, let's just give it an open source to Hyperledger and see what they do with it. I don't really want Hyperledger to become that sort of a place. Um, I don't think there's any projects that have happened to us yet, but I want to make sure that we don't get that to happen to Hyperledger. Um, I, I fully support that sentiment. I can tell you in my company, just to name one, we have had that case where people say, hey, you know, we'd like to make this, you know, we developed all this code and now we don't know what to do with it. So can we contribute it? And I always say, no, <laughs> Hyperledger is not a dumping ground for your old code even yeah yeah, yeah you're, you're exactly right are now right i mean prior to my exit from your company <laughs> what did yeah. you say? I'm, I'm, i didn't know you took over from arvin but uh i'm glad that they finally have somebody like you in charge but um the uh <laughs> no it was the same thing right like if you want to open source it i was always like right we we have open source right we can put it under either the ibm dot like as ibm we could have put it under ibm com we could have put it yeah. under ibm blockchain right put it out in open source and then figure out, you know, one. And, and, and I think to a degree, right. I'm all, I'm not always sure why like labs projects don't follow that same thing, but that's a whole different story, right? If you truly want to do open source and you want to build a community, then go do it. Right. And then, you know, I think that's when it makes it easier to, to, to bring it over here. Right. Cause yeah, you don't want stuff being a dumping ground. And I think that's the primary motivation between the right for, I don't think it's so much of a control thing too. It's like that, you know, it's that somebody can, if we're going to put it over here, what are the promises that we, that that Hyperledger is making to, you know, people, right? That, that the code that came under Hyperledger is, is X, Y, Z, right? It's not going to be, it's fairly governed, blah, 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 right? That's the, those are the reasons for any of this stuff, right? Yeah. But so I, I think, I mean, let's be careful because the labs, you know, we created it, to be purposefully yeah. light processed or based, right? Agreed. So 
to me, it's okay for people to dump code on the lab uh, repo because if nothing happens there, we will archive eventually like six months oh. later or something like this. And the cost is very minimal. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I didn't mean we should add more process to the labs. I was just saying that if for some reason, like something doesn't make it through, like there's some weird reason they can't become a lab. If they truly had the intent of doing open source and wanted to start something, they should be able to go do it. You, you know, they, they should just go ahead and do it, right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. fact oh, that they're not a lab shouldn't mean the fact that they shouldn't go do it. That's, that, that's, that's the proof in the pudding to right. me, right? Is that you were willing to go put it out in open source. But so I think it is fair to say that, you know, the code should be available at the time people, you know, in open source at the at time people make a proposal to create a project with it or run that code. Uh, I don't think we can really put a time, uh, you know, limit kind of thing like, oh, it's been open source for six months at least or that, you know, there are already several companies that are or pe contributors that have participated in this project. That that's it becomes much harder, I think. And the problem with this hard number like that is people will absolutely find ways to game it. <laughs> so I think we need to put a quality statement. And that's why I want you know, entry to be quality because yes, we're going to debate it. But if if it you know if, if you're if you have legit open source software at this level that we're going to have for, for entry, it's going to be obvious that you're faking here that it's legit. Yeah, but I'm also sensitive to this, the point somebody made along the way, which is that, you know, incubation is also a way to grow your community. So we can't require people, yeah. you know, expect people to have already built a community because then why would they even bother come to a hyperledger? In the initial project proposal, we always had, you know, two companies. I think in most cases, we had two companies committing resources to it. it. There was typically one company that had developed the code and the other say, yeah, I think this is interesting. And once you bring it to Hyperledger, I commit to working on it. And by the way, whether it happened or not is a different story, but at least there was a statement you know, made at the time of the proposal, which I think is reasonable and should be enough for us to say, okay, fair enough. We can go with that. But I think there's more to open source than just the community. There's a commitment to governance that you can have an open governance. There's a process for maintainers. And for, you know, if you're just exposing an internal company project, you know, the hierarchy is built into the teams. You know, the team lead makes most of the decisions when there's a conflict or there's some established company process for doing that. And, you know, I think that's my main reason for wanting to have it be open source somewhere is to make sure that you have at least gone through those considerations which is why I think six months is too long as, as a minimum. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, two hours is too short. So. Okay, that's an interesting point. I mean, you, you think so. I don't know if everybody would agree with this. Uh, hot. Yeah, so I, I said this in chat, but I agree with Dano. And I think there's a difference between open source software and open source development, right? And that's essentially what people seem to be saying, at least to me, right? Open source software is just code that's public, right? Open source development is all of this additional framework on the code, you know, governance, updates, maintainers, you know, support, all this other stuff uh, that really, you know, sort of lets things happen. Um, and I think there's a big distinction between these things. And I think in Hyperledger, we're really about open source development and not necessarily just open source software. Um, and I think it's important to emphasize this distinction. I hope that made sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Thank you. All right, so for now, it seems like mostly Dano has chipped in and started writing. I, uh, we don't necessarily have to do it now. I mean, people may want to take some time to do that, but I think that's a reasonable process to try and develop those, this list of considerations, which is what we call them now. So we have five minutes left. If anybody wants to bring up any of such questions, we can already kind of see where people stand. I think that's useful. Otherwise, we can continue 
adding this page offline, it's fine. We can have that go on for a while. I suspect that, you know, I, I, I suggest that we do a little bit of that. And then, you know, we start discussing those points just like we did now uh, on the calls. So we can, you know, uh, try to firm up the list and uh, clarify and figure out if there are things for which, you know, the points are controversial, people don't want them, kind of like that. Does that make sense? Gary? Oh yeah, makes sense. Uh, question, how do we time box an exercise like this so that we don't go into analysis paralysis and then everybody coming back and revisiting it again if this is the, because right, this started a long time ago and we, we, we're making progress I feel, but I don't know that, I, I, I still don't see a path to close whatever that means. <laughs> Wait, we just started building that list, literally. Yeah, but, we, but we've been talking about this whole process like for a long time. No. Badging, we, everything, right? I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but that's not the same. Let's not confuse everything. This is just about this entering incubation evaluation that we went through with Firefly that brought up this flaw that we have where we have no documentation whatsoever to frame the evaluation of a project proposal. And we only started this process, what was it last week or the week before? Sure. After the global forum. So uh, I agree with you. We don't want that to drag on for six months, but I think maybe, you know, it takes a month or so. And then we say, okay, enough. I'm happy to leave it open for now, see how okay. it evolves. Hopefully the list will change quite quickly initially, and then things will settle down. Okay. All right. I, I, yeah, I guess that, that, that seems fair. But at some point, right, you got to say, like, yes. speak now or forever hold your peace. I agree. And this is, you know, the same is true for the criteria for that matter. That's what we did. So we're almost out of time. I'm happy to, to close the call now. And, and, you know, maybe people can use the few minutes left to think about what's already written and what they would like to add to this list. I think uh, what Dano did is reasonable. Put your name in front if you want, otherwise we'll chase you anyway. <laughs> but uh, I think, you know, I encourage people to think about this and add to the list for now. And you can ask questions, you know, feel free. And Karen, thank you for helping us with the usage of the, you know, um, the wiki, uh, you can ask questions and comment at the at the bottom of the page as well. Okay, so let's try to have a discussion offline and use the calls to get deeper into any questions that maybe you know that may come up. Sounds good. All right. Don't see any more hands up. So let's call it a day. Thank you all for joining. We'll talk again soon. I don't think next week, but the following week for sure. All right.